Mourinho, which I was talking about earlier. NH3. NH3, what NH3 has is, if I was to, um, yeah, I won't draw it up yet, but what it has is uh, three bonded pairs. So now we're looking at, we're still looking at uh, the idea of having four electron pairs. It has three bonded pairs and it has one lone pair, which in this previous example was utilized to make this ammonium ion. Oh yeah, what I think I, I, would, I, I would do for this is represent that. So we've got this plus, yeah, ammonium ion. So we've got three bonded pairs and one lone pair in uh, ammonia. And what happens is, rather than uh, the angles being all equal, like this is, what happens is there's an extra amount of repulsion. So what this angle disappears, so like that, that disappears, because this is replaced by the lone pair. Well, obviously not in this molecule, but for that particular kind of shape. So, in drawing this, it would look something like this. So we'd have the nitrogen, and we'd have the lone pair of electrons, and then we'd have the uh, one of the hydrogens, and another hydrogen pointing towards you, so a wedge, and a dashed broken line for one of the hydrogens pointing away from you. So this is what the structure of ammonia would look like. And the reason why we have like, actually, let me go get into that before I go look at the reason why I like, yeah, I haven't put the thing up there first yet. So what we actually have here on this molecule is a uh, smaller angle than up here between these hydrogens. This angle, if we actually looked at it, is 109.5 minus 2.5 and if we do that we find that this angle would be 107 so 107 degrees the reason i said 109.5 minus 2.5 is because that's the way i i sort of remember the different angles so for 109.5 we're going to just minus 2.5 and we get 107 and i'm going to show you another bond angle in this video which is 104.5 which is just 107 minus 2.5 so that's how i remember the bond angles so what we have here is the uh, smaller bond angle than, a, than above. And the reason for this is that this, uh, this lone pair here causes a lone pair bonding pair repulsion. And if you remember, the lone pair bonding pair repulsion, so this repulsion here is much stronger than this repulsion here. Well, slightly stronger than this repulsion here. And so these angles are going to be uh, pushed together. So these angles have been pushed together and so now they're now 107 degrees rather than 109.5 so 107 degrees now and if we actually look at the naming of this structure the naming of this structure first of all looking at the fact that there's three hydrogens if we were to just simply join these three hydrogens together right we would form a familiar shape and that familiar shape is the triangle. So we triangle. And remember what I said about the uh, whole triangle thing and molecular geometry. When what the what we usually use to describe triangles is the word trigonal. Trigonal. Whoa! I just wrote triangle. <laughs> what? That was weird. I, I was saying I was saying triangle. No, I was saying trigonal in my head. But anyway. So trigonal, trigonal. So what we have here is a trigonal, uh, we use trigonal to describe that shape. And if we now join up these hydrogens to the nitrogen at the top to make a 3D shape, so we join this up like this. What we now have is a triangular based pyramid. And so this is now a pyramid. And we the word we use to describe things which have a sh uh, shape similar to that of uh, triangular based pyramids is pyramidal pyramidal middle pyramidal so the, the the what we use to this the the name of this kind of uh shape the name of this um the mole molecular shape is trigonal pyramidal and now let's take a look at another molecule 
very very familiar molecule H2O and H2O has four four we're still looking at four electron pairs four elect four oh my pencils pen seems to be acting four electron pairs and what we actually whoa what I'm gonna pause this video and try and fix my pen okay that was strange but yeah we've got four electron pairs and and we have in these four electron pairs what we have is two bonding pairs two bonding pairs or bonded pairs and we have two lone pairs as well two lone pairs and so the the, the what happens is that we're gonna have uh, all three types of repulsion here we're gonna have lone pair lone pair repulsion since we have more than one lone pair we're gonna have bonding pair bonding pair repulsion since we have two bonding pairs and we're gonna have uh bonding pair lone pair repulsion since we have the uh bonding pair and lone pair and i talked about this in the previous video but i'm gonna go over it here just so that we can actually look at the shape of the molecule now so if i actually draw out this molecule and this goes back to the idea of having just one plane so this is what the, the kind of uh, structure it has one plane so we're gonna have the oxygen in the middle and then we have the two h2o molecule hey, um, i mean the two hydrogen molecules so hydrogen and hydrogen and this oxygen here in the middle is going to have two lone pairs of electrons so one lone pair here and maybe one lone pair here and uh, this is not exactly to scale because this angle is usually represented as being significantly smaller than I've drawn it here this is just like a representation and this angle here between the two hydrogen atoms is going to be sh sh shrunken it's going to be smaller than the one here because now we have two lone pairs rather than just one and it's going to be 107 so remember i said i remember it by taking away 2.5 it's going to be 107 minus 2.5 so if you do that uh, you'd find that 107 minus 2.5 is 104.5 so this angle here between these between these uh two hydrogen atoms is 104.5 degrees and this uh, molecule is in one plane so it's very it's, it's slightly similar to the carbon dioxide sh shape except it's bent like I said it's like an upside down V it's not like a straight line so we say that yeah it could be linear okay actually we don't say it could be linear we say that it's non-linear we say that it's similar to linear except it's not in a straight line as in it's one it's in one plane but it's not in a straight line so we say non-linear so this is the name we give to the h2o molecule non-linear and so now let's move on to if we had more than four electron pairs so let's look at what would happen if we had five electron pairs i won't i won't go into if we had five electron pairs and maybe uh four bonding pairs one lone pair and all of that but what i'm going to focus on is if we just had uh five bonding pairs and this is one of those uh slightly tricky ones so if i was to look at this um this is phosphorus and i believe this is phosphorus pentachloride 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 yeah and the shape this has is um something like this so this has um in total it's got five electron pairs before i go into drawing the structure it's got five electron pairs and it's got five bonding pairs and zero lone pairs so it's pcl5 and if I actually draw this structure, it looks something like this. So it forms a triangle in the middle. So we have the phosphorus and it forms a... Actually, I won't go straight into the triangle. I'll draw the, the CL at the top and the CL at the bottom. And now I'm going to join the actual triangle. So we have the uh, chlorine here as well. And then we have a wedge here. So wedge, and we have a dashed, uh, dashed slash broken line. So broken line. 
and then we have the chlorine on uh, at the end of that and so if we look at oh yeah i forgot this chlorine cl so if we look at this we can see that um we have all five chlorines on here and we can actually form uh, some interesting shapes with this so first of all the common shape which i've been talking about in this video was the triangle we can actually form a triangle with this so if you look at this if i join these chlorines which are all in one plane notice that these 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 three chlorines are in one plane except it's like at a right angle to the screen so it's yeah these chlorines are make make up a triangle and so the first part of this name we use to describe this triangular attribute here to make it known that this actually has three chlorine atoms in one plane and so we use the word trigonal and leading off this idea looking at the fact that we've got three triangles i mean three uh not only three atoms here but they're all in the same plane uh this angle here is going to be the same as if we had a trigonal planar uh, molecule. So this angle is going to be 120 degrees. And so is this one and so is this one, this angle. And the second part of the name comes from the three dimensional aspect of this structure. So if we were to join up the, uh, the chlorines to make a little triangular based pyramid from the, from the middle section of this molecule, so join that up here and that and that. As you can see, I've made the triangular base pyramid and this pyramid, pyram, pyramidal aspect of it is described in the name of its molecular uh, structure or its molecular geometry, its name for the shape of the molecule. And if we actually look at this, we will find that we've actually got two of these. So not ignoring this one down here, if we were to join this chlorine to the one down here and do the same with that and this, what we find is we have a reflection in this in this triangle, in the plane of this red triangle, we have a reflection. We've got a pyramid up here and a pyramid down here. Now, if you ask yourself, okay, what do we call a, um, a self pedal device with two wheels two wheels you know the one of the pedals and anyway this is kind of not too relevant but a bicycle has two wheels and this particular structure here this shape has two triangles and what we used to describe the triangle the, the bicycle is by we use the by prefix and we use that for here as well by and the next part of it, it describes this the, the pyramidal aspect. So we say trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal bipyramidal. And so this is the name for this particular structure. Now this angle here is 120 degrees. And the other angle, so this angle, wait, let me choose a different color. This angle here is going to be 90 degrees because it's at a right angle to that plane. And this angle here is going to be 90 this this angle is going to be 90 this angle is going to be 90 and all of these different angles are going to be 90 degrees so now let's move on to my final molecule and this molecule has rather than having five five electron pairs what we have is six electron pairs and what we have is six bonding pairs and we have the zero lone pairs zero lone pairs and this is SF6, which is so far um, hexa, hexafluoride, I think. So far hexafluoride. So far hexafluoride. And the way we draw this particular structure, so I'm going to draw this up now. Bear in mind that we all we have here is bonded pairs, so there's not going to be uneven repulsion. All we have is we have the sulfur in the middle and the fluorine at the top, a fluorine at the bottom. And all the repulsion in this particular molecule is equal in terms of the, the bonds. So we have the sulfur and the fluorine. And then we have two wedged bonds. So two wedged bonds. One here, one here. I know I say they're wedged bonds. These bonds are pretty much the same. 
except just that the diagram represents a point towards you and the broken line ones sort of there yeah so this is the structure of sulfur hexafluoride SF6 and as you can see this has got two fluorines pointing towards two pointing away and the ones at the top so let's first look at the bond angles now the bond angles in this one they're all equal and if you form the cube you could probably fit this inside a nicely in the cube so this this particular angle here is actually 90 degrees 90 degrees and all of the different angles between the at the neighboring uh fluorine molecule fluorine not fluorine molecules the neighboring fluorine atoms are 90 degrees so this is 90 degrees uh this is 90 degrees even the one between this and this is 90 degrees all of these different angles are 90 degrees so this is one of those very very uh, symmetrical molecules we've got a lot of 90 degree angles in this molecule and the way we create the name for this particular structure is we create the three dimensional shape of it and we look at the number of faces on that shape so if I was to make a three dimensional shape so I would join the ones in the first plane actually let me use a color I haven't used to that it, it, so there's a contrast so join this one and this one and this one and this one and yeah. And then we need to join all of that to this. So this is a slightly confusing structure, but what I actually have is just two square base pyramids which are base to base. So two square base pyramids which are base to base. So we just have this on the top and the same thing on the bottom except the square bases basically the both square bases are touching each other. So not counting the bases since they're not going to be visible to the outside. Looking at this shape, what we have is four faces. So one let me use a different color for that. We have one, two, and then the one at the back, three, and this one four. And we have this twice, so one at the top and one at the bottom. And four plus four equals eight and the prefix we usually use to describe things with eight with eight are octa or octa like octopus which has eight arms so we have octa and the, 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 the rest of the name is octahedral so i mean hedral so octahedral so the structure of this is octahedral the molecular like the name for it is octahedral And so yeah, this is what it would look like, and this is the name for it. And so I hope you. Uh, this is the end of the video because, like, yeah, this is this is more or less all of the different structures which you might, you, which you might encounter. And so I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.